Faith Church. Welcome everybody online. God is good all the time. All the time. And he is so faithful. He's a faithful God. He's a God who will never lie to us. His promises are always yes and amen. I'm just going to read one verse on Psalm 107. It says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithfulness, love, and us forever. Over here is telling us to give thanks to God, no matter our circumstances. It says, Ephesians 1 3 said, Oh, I give thanks to the Lord for all the spirit of blessings He has given us. So we are so grateful. Lord, we just come to you, Lord, praising you, Lord, glorifying you, Lord, magnifying your holy name, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because it's you who we come to worship you. It's you who we come to seek, Lord. Lord, we just depend on you. We depend on the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the attentive but anointed upon our worship leaders, Lord, this morning, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the attentive but anointed upon, upon Pastor Gary this morning. And whoever comes up here, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We worship you, Lord, in the spirit of we just give ourselves to you, Lord. We open our heart to you, Lord. We open our ears to hear what the God of man is saying, what the Spirit of God is saying, Lord, to Pastor Gary this morning, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Ora namarasha da parada sunda marada sunda mariasha da parada sundo. Ela la shonda marada sura la la papiasha da paria sundo por los sundo. Ela la la rasha da parada sunda marada Trust me with all your heart, says the Lord. Do not hear on your understanding, but I will acknowledge me that, that you will see me come through. Just praise me and worship me. In Jesus' name, that is the Lord. Amen. We just go around and greet everybody. In Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What she said. Okay. <laughs> together again.
told nations to sing. Yeah. 
dreams are telling, telling the earth how great you are. We are the sun, the heavens are rising.
does not matter one bit. Nothing matters, only Him. When we are in His presence, it's all about Him. It's all about Him. He's so worthy. He's so worthy for us to come into His presence and to just worship. To tell Him how much you love Him. Tell him what he means to you. He loves to hear that. He loves when we tell him he's wonderful. When he's, we tell him he's so good. He's been so good. You know what? Even when things don't seem to go our way, he's still good. He's still good. Even when there's no, he's still good and he's still God. I could see up the road a ways, quite a little ways up the road, I could see something that was 
bright and it's sparkling, kind of like a like a, a precious jewel, but it's not jewelry. I can see something up there. It's just a, a, a precious. It's going to be very precious to you, okay? And I don't like the set dates. I don't, I don't like. I don't believe in that. But it's, uh, September keeps coming up in my spirit. I don't know what all that means. Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I had this song kind of going around my spirit this morning. It was a little bit different than the, the songs we were singing. All the ones we were singing were great. But the song soon and very soon. We are going to save the king. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon. We are going to save the king. Glory. I mean, that much longer. Thank you, Lord.
why don't we take up our Sunday morning offering right now? Honor the Lord. The Bible talks about honoring the Lord with the first fruits that you have. So we believe in honoring God. We believe in tithing and we believe in sowing. The Word of God teaches us that, that when you sow, you're going to reap. If you sow uh, sparingly, we reap sparingly. We're still going to reap. But if you sow bountifully, we're going to reap bountifully. And so we have an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God for the work of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you need anything, need an envelope. If you need help spelling million. Brother Tony can help you do that today. That's his favorite number. Amen. 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 Tony. Well, let's say something good. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you so much. I thank you so much. That the windows of heaven. That the windows of heaven. Have been open for me. Have been open for me. And you're pouring out a blessing. And you're pouring out a blessing. I don't have room enough to contain. So I gotta share it with everybody else around me. So I gotta share it with everybody else around me. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 21 and 22. Just as our text. Okay? Exodus, uh, Exodus 25, verses 21 and 22. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I have give, that I give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony. Of all the things that I will give thee in commandments unto the children of Israel. You know, there's a still a place today, not talking about the Ark of the Covenant, but there is a place that God wants us to you can hear God, you know. You don't hear God in every church, but you can come to church here and, and you can hear the voice of God speaking to you. Amen. Just the yes. presence of God through the music, through the word, through the gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is able to talk to people. But you have to have a listening ear too. Amen? Amen. And so with me, go with me to 1 Peter. We'll look at a few scriptures. You don't mind looking at a few scriptures, do you? No, Not a whole lot, but uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 6. <laughs> 
For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Notice that the end of all things is at hand. Right? Now that was written 2,000 years ago. If it was, if it was at hand then, uh, it, it is, it is uh, you know, right at the door today. Uh, you and I are the last generation uh, in the dispensation of grace. He is coming. He is coming soon. And uh, we need to understand that when you, when you really begin to believe that he's coming soon, you, you look at things a little bit different. And then the word of God tells us, and, you know, we know that God's word cannot, cannot lie. And so he just tells us, now, the end of all things is at hand. Well, if that's the case, then then, then perhaps we, we have to look at uh, our lives a little bit better. The Amplified reads, the end and the culmination of all things is near. Therefore, be sound-minded and self-controlled for the purpose of prayer. <coughs> Stay balanced and focused on the things of God so that your communication will be clear, reasonable, specific, and pleasing to Him. And it reads a lot different in the, in the Amplified. The Amplified takes the Greek and it brings out all the, the different nuances of the Greek, telling us what, what uh, uh, you know, when, uh, uh, in the English, you know, we have one word for love. You know, I love my coffee, I love my dog, I love my wife. Hopefully you love your wife different than you love your dog. But see, we only have one word. But in, in the Greek, they have at least four words that, that uh, explain what love is. Yes. Okay? And yeah. what is it? Uh, there is uh, uh, agape, of course, eros, uh, storge, and phileo. Okay? I don't know what the definitions are, but there's brotherly love, you know, we love somebody like a brother, family love, uh, so on and so forth. But it's just the, the end and the combination of everything is at hand. Okay? Everything is happening now before us. And we, we're, we are seeing things no other generation has ever seen, ever. Haven't seen it like this, and we're seeing it. And sometimes we're, we're, we're just blind to what was going on around us. We don't pay any attention. We're just going on like, well, you know, tomorrow is going to be tomorrow. And, and you know, you always talk, Pastor. You've been talking about Jesus coming, and I say, yeah, we've been talking about Jesus coming ever since I got born again. And uh, that would have been about 19 somewhere when I got born again. <laughs> I don't remember the year exactly, but I remember the place. And I, I just got into the Word of God, and I, I remember reading a book by Hal Lindsey called The Late Great Planet Earth. Anybody ever heard of that book? Boy, did that rock my world. And uh, e even more so today. And, uh, and, and in 19, um, 1998, I'm in Greens, uh, Greensburg, Greensburg, Pennsylvania, sitting in a large church towards the back. And the Spirit spoke to me very plain, very strong, and he said, prepare my people for living in the last days. That's why that's up there. Prepare my people for living in the last days. And so uh, that, that's the, the mandate on my life is to prepare people for living in the last days. Now, we don't talk about it every single service, but there's ways. You know, there's, how many different ways can you dress up hamburger? But there's a lot of ways you can fix hamburger. And so we fix up the end times so many different ways you don't even know you don't even know you're eating it, okay? Hallelujah. And it's not the soy kind of burger either. We don't do that stuff. For the end of all things is at hand. Hallelujah. Now go with me to uh, Matthew 24. Matthew again, Jesus talks about the end times, and we're very, very familiar. With these scriptures, there's nothing new that we haven't looked at. Uh, Matthew, uh, uh, verse 20, chapter 24, and let's look at verse uh, 44. And Jesus is talking about with him coming back. And verse 44 in the King James says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Okay? The Aramaic Bible, in plain English, reads, Because of this, be also ready, because at the hour in which you are not expecting, the Son of Man will come. So it's kind of, I'm going to read several different versions of this, because it's all going to say the same thing. Because Jesus said, people aren't going to be expecting it. 
Why? Why aren't we going to be expecting that? We're going to be caught up in, in our, own, our own lives. We're going to be caught up in our own problems. We're going to be caught up in, in, in all the things that we're doing. And so it, it's going to come as a thief. It's going to come. It's just going to come very, very quickly. Okay? God's word translation says, "Be, be." And it says, "Therefore, you too must be ready, because the Son of Man will return when you least expect it." So what it tells us, He's coming. He's going to come unexpectedly, and then it tells us one other thing: be ready. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, "Be ready." Be ready. Be ready. Why this translation says, "Therefore, you must also be ready," for it is a, at a time when you do not expect Him that the Son of Man will come. It's at a time that you do not expect. See, the world doesn't expect him to come. The world doesn't, doesn't think he's coming. They're not even thinking about it. <clears throat> the Passion Bible, and I like the Passion Bible, says, so also be, be ready, alert, and prepared. Be prepared. Huh? Because at an hour where you're not expecting it, the Son of Man will come. Well, if you're prepared, this looks all right, isn't it? Hallelujah. Now, my wife, uh, she'll say, Gary, are you ready to go? You know, we, we're going to go someplace. I said, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm getting up. I'm going down. I'm getting in the car. And uh, it might be another, another 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you know, a little bit of time. Because uh, uh, I, I'm, when she says, are you ready? I'm thinking, well, she must be ready, too. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> it don't take long for me to get ready. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't, men understand it. It doesn't take long for a guy to get ready. You know, uh, you know, that you know, like that. That's true, guys. You got a couple of hands on ready to go. Don't take much. Women, that's a different story. It takes a little bit longer. But see, it just simply says, we're to be ready. Be prepared. Okay? He is coming. He's coming soon. Okay? And uh, we talk about it. I remember Billy Graham says we talk about it, but we act like he's, he's not coming. We, we sing like he's coming, but we, we act like he's not coming. So be ready for in an hour or a time that you don't think he's coming, okay? that, that he is going to come. Kind of turn me over to the book of James. The Lord has spoke to me uh, um, Saturday, yesterday, and uh, uh, just gave me part of a, a, a scripture, and so I realized that that's what he they simply wanted us to talk about James chapter 4. And we'll get down to that scripture in a moment or two. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Did you find James chapter 4? Yes. Now we're going to read it in the King James. Then we're going to go back and we'll kind of just go through it uh, in the in the Passion Bible. Because it's a little bit blind when we read it. You know, it, it's uh, a little easier to understand in the Passion Bible. So verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Verse 5, do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth us to envy? But he giveth more grace, therefore he saith, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your souls, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep, and let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And so we read that in the King James, but let's go back and we want to do it in the uh, uh, Passion Translation. Uh, and because it's kind of, it reads a little bit different. And when I read it in the Passion Translation, I just had a little different uh, view of verse 4. And the Passion says, uh, you, have be you have become spiritual adulterers for having an affair, an unholy relationship with the world. And think about that. Wow. wow. It says that before he said you're adulterers and adulteresses, but it, it's not talking, uh, uh, it's talking spiritually. It says uh, uh, that uh, uh, you, you have become spiritual adulterers who are having an affair, an unholy relationship with the world. Don't you know that flirting with the world's value places you at odds with God? Whosoever chooses to be the world's friend makes 
tempts out God's enemy. How easy, how easy it is for the world to get into our lives. You say, well, how do I know if the, the world gets in my life? Is in my life? Well, how often do you get to church? How often do you get to prayer? How often do you get into the Word? And all, all those things, see, the, the world comes and, and it wants to just get in because, well, this is important. This, this, I, I, this is really important. And, and we we're, we're have to be reminded now, he's coming in such an hour as we think not. So what's going to happen is the world is going to blind us to the facts of these things. The world is, it, it, it is, is a, you know, the, the, the Bible says that, that uh, uh, there, there's pleasure in the world. There's pleasure in the world. It says that over in uh, Timothy, it says they were lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Okay? Didn't say they didn't love God. It said they loved the pleasures of this world. Okay? The world has so much to, to offer today. There are so many things. You know, we, we were able to slip away and, and get away to uh, PEI last weekend. It was our, our, our one year anniversary, praise the Lord. And, and we made it. We made it to Somebody said a miracle? No. It's an awesome here. And uh, but we went to church. It was, it was your, like your honeymoon. Well, we still went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, it, it, church is not a, 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 a byproduct or, or something we tack on the end of things. It becomes the priority in our life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus is, is coming back for the church without spot or wrinkle. Now the thing is, there's some, some pretty big spots and wrinkles that get into our lives and, and, and he will help us. He wants, you know what? God wants you in heaven. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be ready. Okay? He doesn't want you and I to miss the rapture. Because when he comes, it's going to be in the twinkling of an eye. He says that, in, in fact, it's a time when nobody's even really looking for him. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I look at clouds. You ever just look at clouds? Mm -hmm. I, I like to look at clouds. Yeah. I look and to see what's there. Because mm -hmm. they, they just said something a couple of years ago, it's like the clouds were talking. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, they were so striking. I just, they just, uh, uh, I mean, Miss Kim was taking lots of pictures of clouds. I'll take pictures of clouds. It's just, I'd I pull over, it's just that seemed like they were talking to me, like, but I know he's coming back in the clouds. Yeah. And, and just like, you know, you, you say, I, I just got to look, look at the clouds. Could be today. Could be today. Could be today. Amen. Amen. You have become spiritual adulterers who are having an affair with an unholy relationship with the world. You know, sometimes, you know, when people, you know, I, I pastored a church in, in uh, Paragould, Arkansas, and we would do some street ministry and different things, and I, I've never been to a place where more people used to go to church. They used to. Now, you talk to them on the street, and say, well, I used to. I used to. I say, well, what happened? Well, you know, this happened. I, happened. I used to. And so, but they, they got hurt, they got offended, and so they didn't go to church anymore. They say, well, is it that important going to church? Jesus died for this church. That's how it's right. Jesus died for you. He died for me. And so, but they had got somehow they got offended, and they allowed that offense to become a, a spiritual adultery. Because that's what they they, they 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 put that first. Well, I got hurt. Yeah, I tell you, have you ever been to the dentist? <laughs> Did that hurt? Kathy, does it hurt me? I need to go see your dentist. That <laughs> Growing up as a teenager, I, I had a dentist. I called him the Mad Butcher of McMillan. He was, oh. 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 You know how they have the, the long stick and they, they uh -huh. come give you a shot and they put this, it was red at the time. Oh, he'd go, oops, he'd paint my nose red. There you go. He's, very well. <laughs> you have become spiritual adulterers who are having an affair, an unholy relationship with the world. Oh, the world is, you know, so many things to do. I, I remember uh, when, when I started going to church on Sunday night, I didn't get to watch Bonanza. 
anymore. And I didn't get to watch Disney's Wide World of Color. Right? That's been a long time ago when those things used to be on TV. And uh, I've had people say to me, I had this lady come one time, and she said to me, uh, Pastor, would it be okay if we don't have church on Sunday night? And I said, what? why is that? And she said, well, I could just be honest with you. I really want to stay home and watch Tim the Tool Man. I'm serious, and they said that to me. Do you mind if you don't have church? I, don't I, I, don't, I can't miss this program. It's amazing how we can't miss certain programs. Why? Because, well, it's so important. Do you know how many people stay home for the Super Bowl? Super Bowl? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's amazing how many people stay home for opening day of your season. Mm-hmm. Hockey. Oh, no. Sure. Let's just say the Cowboys. Sure. We don't mess with that. Go to the court again. Let's see. I'm out. Maple sugar. Maple. But see, God does something different than we do. We're still a doctor. We think about how, how bad it is in, in the world, you know, in the natural, but, but God looks at spiritual adultery because when you love something more than you love God, yeah. and you put something ahead of God, yeah. that, that, that becomes an idol. Go with me now. We're going to come back to this, but go with me to First uh, John chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 15, I believe. First John chapter 2, verse 15. John writing, he said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now see, you can only be tempted in three ways. Did you know that? There's only three ways you can be tempted, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus was tempted these three ways. Okay? It says, it says that, that, that the, for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not enough. That's the same temptation that he faced in the garden. There was a fruit. She saw the fruit was good. She could see it. She was told that, that uh, you will be like God. That's part of the wrong. Okay? You see all these temptations and the same temptations that Eve faced were the very same temptations that Jesus faced in the wilderness. He said, turn this, this stone into bread. That stone just looked like a, one of those loaves of bread that Mama used to make. You could almost smell it. Okay? Mm-hmm. So would that be, you know, if you're just like, turn that in, turn that over. Okay? But, again, <clears throat> For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of the Father abideth forever. Now you can go back to James. Okay? So it talked that James was talking in chapter four, or chapter four, verse four, was talking about spiritual adultery, about letting things that take the place of, of God or, or where you have to share God. We don't share God with anybody. You love God first. Well, I love my wife. I love my wife too. I love God first. Okay. And 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 then you love you can love your family. You love your but sometimes people love somebody so much that they they will give up church. We had this lady one time. I remember uh, she was married to a heathen, and uh, uh, she was uh, she was a nice lady. She was born again spirit filled. And I remember one day she turned to me. She said that if my husband ever said to me. I, I want to go to church, but I want to go to the church of my choice. She said, you know what, I'd stop coming here. We wouldn't have spirit to go to the church. She said, I'd go anywhere just to go to church with him. Didn't matter which church it was. Makes a difference where you go to church. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Why? Well, makes a difference what you hear. Mm-hmm. It really does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so she was willing to let everything go, you know, to, to just make her husband happy. Well, in the end, she ended up divorcing him because he, she found out later on he'd been having numerous affairs. And so her, you can see where something can get into your life that, that is bigger than God. 
And sometimes we don't even know it. Huh? Sometimes we don't even know it. I remember one time I was, uh, we got time for a story, I assume. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, <clears throat> I grew up pretty much at the hunting and fishing resort and, and one day I, I was up early, it was Sunday morning, and uh, I had to work. There's that time you have to work, I understand that. I had to work, I couldn't always go to church, but I always wanted to be there. And so there were some guys and they were, they were uh, some of the base they used as night callers and they were, they were, had ducked their night callers out, they were picking them out and they were down on their knees. And I remember I said, and I said, I'd love to see that on Sunday morning. So two guys down on their knees. Yes, and, sir. They didn't appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the passion Bible says you have become spiritual adulterers or having an affair an unholy relationship with the world do you not know that flirting with the world's values places you at odds with God whosoever chooses the world's friends is of an enemy of God verse 5 in the, in the passage says does the scripture mean nothing to you that says the spirit of God breathe, that breathed into our hearts is jealous, a jealous lover who intensely desires to have more and more of us? The Holy Ghost is, is an intense lover. He is, he is intense. God's love for you is intense. Oh, when, when somebody goes to the cross and takes the beating that he took and then and goes and then and then dies for us, for our sins and, and becomes sin. So that we could just be with him. And then we get we oh it's a big deal. You know, I know God loves me. I love God, sure I love God. Oh. <clears throat> and so we have to realize that that our hearts have to be so hot after God and especially in these last days. And we have to have a heart after God and a thank to God. Does the scripture mean nothing to you, it says? Does that, does that mean anything? That the spirit of, of God, God, you know what God says? I wish you loved me like you loved the world. I wish that you'd put the emphasis on me that you, you put on, on Netflix. Hockey. Or hockey. <laughs> I wish. I wish. I can't go to church today, but I have a garage sale down there. I've got to go to that. Mm. Verse 6. But he continues to pour out more and more grace upon us. For, as God, for God says, God resists you when you are proud, but continually pours out grace when you are humble. You know, would you like, he says, in, in the King James, he says he gives more grace. We, we, when you understand grace, uh, it's unmerited favor. God is a God of blessing. And he says, if you if you will start to hunger after me, I'll give you more grace. Mm -hmm. So what does more grace look like? More blessings. Mm -hmm. Well, how many could how many could use a few more blessings? Mm -hmm. Well, if we could use more blessings, more blessings. He said, just hunger for me. Mm -hmm. Go after me more and more. And the more if you'll go after me more and more, my grace, my grace will be multiplied to you. Mm -hmm. okay? So grace can be increased. We saw that over in. Uh, uh, um, 1 Peter chapter, I think it's chapter 1, verse 1, great mercy and grace, uh, multiplied unto you. It could be, could be 1 Peter 2, verse 1. But anyway, kind of So he continued to pour out more and more grace upon us. But it says, God resists you when you're proud. You know what? God, God will resist us mm -hmm. when, we, when we get proud of ourselves. And sometimes, you know, we, we I, I remember Brother Bagley said this, I, I thought it was worthy, because we use the word proud, you know, we're proud, I'm proud of you. And we say that to our children, we're proud of you, I'm proud of you, you know, that's proud of you. And uh, Brother Bagley says, you know, pride was, is, is what caused Satan to fall, okay? When Jesus was water baptized, and he came up out of the water, the voice of, from his heavenly father said, I'm so proud of you, son. He didn't call him. He didn't say he was proud by it, right? because that particular thing, that type of pride is demonic. Okay? But he said, I am so well pleased. Yes. So when uh, it begin, if you can, begin to you know, insert that more and more into your conversation. You know, and, and, but I'm so well pleased. Why? Because God is well pleased with you. Mm. Okay? Isn't God proud of me? 
No, God's not proud of you, but he is well pleased. Especially when you're going after him in these last days. He's coming soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Okay? And we need to be reminded of it. We need to be told about it. The Bible says to remind each other that he's coming soon. Why? Because we, we can't let the world get a hold. We can't let the world uh, become, uh, you know, uh, the, the big star attraction in our life. It has to be God. God has to come first in our life. God has to come first in your life. We cannot bury our talents and our gifts. We can't bury those things. We need to bring them out and use them. And so verse 7, it says, uh, so surrender to God. The King James says, submit yourself therefore to God. Okay? Uh, uh, so when you submit, that's, that's not a, a word that most people like, but it, it means to yield to God. Just to yield. You know, when you're when you're on the highways and you're traveling and you're going to get on the Trans Canada, sometimes you're coming in from a side road that has a little, it doesn't say submit, it says yield. That's a better word, yield. Yield. Why? Because if you just slow down just a little bit, just yield, okay? Kind of helps keep, it keeps you from having an accident. And so it says in, in the uh, uh, passion, it says, so then surrender to God. We sang a, a line of, of one of the songs that talk about surrendering to God. Surrender, okay? Are you surrendered? Have you surrendered everything? Because if you have it, you, 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 we need to think about that. We need, we need to, you, we. I include myself. I have to think about those things too. Am I totally surrendered? Have I surrendered everything to him? He's coming soon. You're not going to get a second chance at the rapture. Okay? It's a one shot deal. Yeah. Either you're ready or you're not. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen some clips, you know, I mean, they can, people can only imagine what it would be like. But to the ones that, that missed it and, and they saw people go leave and, and, and go. And they, the, the horror of, of all of the, kind of the awakening to the sudden, suddenly, I missed it. I missed the rapture. And what is it? What's in store? Well, no big deal if you missed the rapture. Well, it is a big deal. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because cause something's coming. Mm -hmm. Seven years is coming. Mm -hmm. Seven years. The first three and a half is called the tribulation. The second and a half is called the great tribulation. And believers, oh, I'll, I'll be a believer. Well, are you ready to lose your head? Because you're going to lose your head. You're, you will lose your head if you're going to stand up for Jesus Christ. Well, you know, and, and it's going to be a little more difficult. Why? Because you're not going to be able to buy. You're not going to be able to sell. You're not going to be able to get this. You're not going to be able to get that. You're not going to be able to have a job. You're not going to, because you, you have to take the mark of the beast. And if you don't take the mark of the beast, they're going to cut your head off anybody. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't, act, in my mind, wouldn't it be better to go to rapture and miss all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Praise God. For my son Steve was, he was reading these books called Left Behind, a whole series of them by Tim and Abe. And he said, Dad, it'd be kind of interesting to, to be, be, maybe, you know, to be, be, be left behind. See all this? I said, call him, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, that's so dumb. Yeah. That's so dumb. Mm. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to miss it. Okay? You don't want to miss it. Why? But people will. People will miss it. Why? Because the, the world has gotten in. The world meant more than, than the things of God. Okay? Many churches are, are well, you know, they'll miss it. There'll be just as many people on Sunday morning than the next Sunday after that in church. Maybe a lot more. Now there will come a, a mighty move of God in, in during the tribulation. Multitudes are gonna are, are gonna realize that they've missed it and, and they're gonna give their hearts to the Lord, but they're willing to die for it. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to live for God today, what makes you think you're gonna be willing to die for him tomorrow? Are you really willing to live for Are you willing to give up some things so that you can, you can make heaven your home? There's not going to be any hockey in heaven, I'm pretty sure. I'm not even sure there's going to be a hockey player in there. Maybe Wayne Gretzky or somebody like that. No, I'm just joking. About the hockey. 
I don't want to miss the rapture. I don't want to miss these things. We're, we're right at the cusp of all these things. And we, 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 we can't, see, we don't see it. We're blind to it. Do you know the big parade today? Nobody knows about the big parade? Hmm? Yeah, they're having the, the pride parade today. Okay? Yeah, now, just hold on. The, uh, the, these things, you know, Jesus said this, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. right? We are seeing all the things that we're seeing around us, not just that, but everything we're seeing. The, the, the uh, rebellion against constituted authority, mm -hmm. that's against you know, the government. The, gov the, the, the rebellion against the government, the government's rebelling against the people. The, the world, is, the, the economy is going more and more in chaos. If you, you know, I like to, I like to shop at, at Costco sometimes uh, because sometimes the food is cheaper. It's getting where you can't afford Costco sometimes now. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, is, it is amazing. And, you know, we used to buy a box of the of the coffee. You know, it had 110 little curds in it. You used to get them for $34. Now it's like $45, something like that. So mm -hmm. every, the inflation is going up and up and up and up and up. Hallelujah. But we're living in a, in a time that our eyes have become blinded to these things. We don't see it. Mm. Oh, is there anything wrong? Well, again, mm. we're, we're not, we're, we're, we've allowed the world to get into our lives yeah. and to cloud our thinking. Yeah. Jesus is coming back for a pure people, a holy people. The Bible, doesn't the Bible say, be ye holy? And yeah. I'm holy. He's called you and I to, to walk in holiness mm -hmm. and in righteousness. You know, he's coming. He's coming soon. God said what he meant, meant what he said. But we're living in a day and an age where the world and religion is changing the scriptures to fit their need. Okay? Okay? We don't change the scriptures because we don't like what it says. We allow the scriptures to change us. Okay? The word of God is meant to change us, not change the word. word. It says they changed the scriptures and turned it into fables. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I've had people tell me, you know, that, that the Bible's not true. These things aren't so. Okay? But they are. Okay? They are true. Right. Jesus did not lie. You know, there was uh, I saw something here the other day, and it was talking about. Mary Magdalene. And, it's, and it said Mary Magdalene had been a prostitute. Well, that probably she was. Okay. And Jesus knew this. And so she, have, has anybody ever watched The Chosen? Watch The Chosen? If you get the chance, watch The Chosen. It's a series on Jesus. It's amazing. And Mary Magdalene is saved. She gets delivered from the demons. And so as they're traveling, he, Jesus said, come and follow me. And people followed him. And she was one of them that followed him. Mm -hmm. And so the author of this article said, well, of course she was a prostitute. Because Jesus knew the disciples, they were going to be out there all by themselves. They, they needed some comfort. They needed a woman to be there. And so they just all shared her. See, see how the world twists everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, Oh, that sounds reasonable. No, it's just, it's just devilish, demonic. But that's the type of, we, we don't even see the demonic half the time anymore. Okay? We don't even see it. But you see, when, when we live in a day and an age where the government tells us that evangelicals are the worst enemy that's ever been in Canada, okay? The evangelicals are, are, they're saying that evangelicals are the enemy. Well, who would say something like that? Well, I'm not going to say who. I get, it comes from the highest authority. Okay. So it says in verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. It says in the, in the passage, So surrender to God, stand up to the devil, and resist him, and he will flee in agony. Verse, verse 8. This is the verse that God spoke to me. He speaks to me in scripture 
oftentimes, and then he speaks, sometimes this is part of a verse, and this is the ver part of the verse that he spoke to me, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh. That's actually the, the verse that's in on the, the Facebook page today. It tells us, tells us, it gives us the remedy, and all these things, have badness, badness, he gives us the remedy. There is a remedy. Get close to God. Get closer to God. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought I was pretty good. Could you? Could you? Could you get a little bit closer? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the story. I like to do. If you do have time. Yeah. Yes. It was a older couple that had been dating as, as young couples and and driving around. And, you know, many years ago when when uh, the pickup trucks had. One seat, one bench seat. Remember that? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. And she said, "Oh, honey," she said, "when we, we, we were younger, we, we," she said, "we sat so close to each other. You know, I was right sitting right next to you. You know, and, and everything." And, and she said, "That was so nice." And then she, now, years later, she said, "But now she says she's sitting over by the window." And she said, "Something's happened to us. We're, we're not close like we used to be." He said, "I haven't moved." I haven't moved. Mm -hmm. See, God hasn't moved. Mm -hmm. So he tells us something. Draw and I take steps to get closer to God. Now, think about this. God doesn't make steps to get closer to us first. Mm -hmm. Faith requires us to do something. Mm -hmm. Faith always requires you take the step, God will mean it. Okay? He says, if you will draw and I take if you will take steps, to draw an eye to God. If you take a step, God will take two. Mm -hmm. If you take two, God will take more. You see, but God wants to see that you and I are willing to take steps to get closer to Him. That's the key to getting through all of these things. That's the key for you and I making it into the natural dirt. That's the key for us serving God. Get closer to God. Amen. If I get closer to God, I can't do everything I want to do. That's the story. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. But you'll find that when you're serving God, the things that you used to enjoy aren't as much fun anymore. Amen. Did you ever notice that once you got saved, you were ruined for sinning? It doesn't you sin, but it doesn't have the fun like it used to be. Mm. It's just ruined. Okay? And so God, God says, draw nigh to me. He says, make that step towards me. Draw nigh to me. I'll come closer to you. Wow. We want God's grace. We want more of God's grace. Here in the in the in the uh, passion it says, move your heart closer and closer to God. Mm. Move your heart. It's all about the heart. It's always been about the heart. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and He will come even closer to you. Mm. But make sure you cleanse your life, you sinners, and you keep your hearts pure and undone. Mm. Oh. Move your heart closer and closer to God. Mm -hmm. I love it when I, I love when I come to church. I, I feel something that uh, you know I can I can feel His presence at home. But then there's something about when I come to church and I feel it. Yeah. Sunday morning, there's something I feel. Sunday night, something I feel that that's just you can't you can't you can't describe it. I just know that it's God. Mm -hmm. I know that it's His presence. I feel it on Wednesday night, and I I was just saying, like, Lord, this is where I belong. This is where I belong. I belong in that, that presence of God. You and, I, you and I were created for his presence. Yes. You and I were created to walk with him. You and I were created to worship him and to bow down before him. And we let so many things get in the way. And those things can, can keep us from the best that God's got. I want God's best, don't you? Yes. I want God's best. This 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 show is about to wrap up. When's it coming? I don't know. I, I, if I could tell you, I, I would, but I don't know. You see, Jesus doesn't know either. He does not know. Jesus, I don't know the day or the hour. Well, why doesn't Jesus? I thought he was God. He is. He's, he's God. But he said, you know. But he's also called us friends. Is that right? Yes. You are my friends. Well, if, if he's a friend, you tell me. 
And but you don't know he can't tell me. You understand that? Mm -hmm. he, he would tell us if he knew. He's waiting. You know, all of heaven is is, is poised. The whole, the, 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 the everything is, is, is ready. Everything is ready. There's a young man I met. He gave his testimony at, at Bible school, and he was a um, he was a nice guy. And uh, he had died on the operating table, and 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 they they resuscitated and brought him back and uh, when he came to, to school to give his testimony he talked about going to heaven and he said when he got to heaven the Lord was there and and he said would you like to see the, the marriage feast of the lamb he said I would love to see that and so he just the Lord <coughs> took him to this where there's like endless rows of, of, of tables and these you know, Ornate, decorated women. You're going. You don't want this happen. You don't want this. This. He he described. He said Jesus picked up every utensil and explained why it was like it was. It's just ornate. It was gold. Gold like you'd never seen gold before. Mm -hmm. And every everything had a purpose. And and he showed him his his where he was sitting. And there was this his name was written there. Everybody's name is written. You have your spot. It's going to be. And there was this big, big platter that had this big dome over it. And the Lord said, would you like to see what's under that? Lobster? Yeah. And the Lord reached up and pulled the top off. You know what it was? Chocolate chip cookies. Right on. Oh, 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 yes. oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yourself down there because you're going to have, have things down there in heaven that money can never buy. <laughs> Pleasures. You think, well, then what's the ultimate pleasure on, on earth? It, it, there's nothing in, in heaven, nothing even compares to what the pleasures of heaven are. Oh, boy, I love it. Wow. Nothing compares. I can't wait. Compares to what you and I are going to experience. Wow. And so he, he says, for such an hour to think, ah, well, I like to think about it. That's why we're doing it. We're thinking about it. It's coming. Yeah. He tells us that he warns us. He gives us a warning. And then he gives us the answer. Draw closer. Draw closer. Draw closer. Draw closer. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do that? How are you going to draw closer to God? That's a good question, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for asking that. How, how would we draw closer to God? I mean, you know, he tells us to, but how can, how can I love him more? Mm. Well, the more you know about him, the more you're going to love him. Mm -hmm. so that means you, the, more we know, the more we understand him. You know what? I, just what we did today, I have a deeper love for God in his coming. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I, I realized how much he loves me. Mm. And he said, Gary, I want you there. I want you. I want, the, I want my church there. I don't want them to miss this. I want them there. I don't want them to, 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 to you know, wake up one day and, they're, and, and the church is gone to heaven and they're here. They have to go through the tribulation. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to go through tribulation. Mm -hmm. But it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So could the rapture happen today? Yes. Mm -hmm. It could. Mm -hmm. It said we don't know. If we, if we knew, I mean, if we knew beyond the shadow of a doubt, the day and the hour, we would have to break out extra chairs. Mm -hmm. We'd have to put chairs up here, chairs in the basement, chairs out in the parking lot, in the tent. We'd have to clear all the stuff off there because there'd be so many people wanting to be sure that they were here. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that they would even show up is, well, I know he's coming now. Now I know. Now I got to, I got to straighten everything up, so I better get it right, right now because he's going to be here. He's going to be here anyway. And God says, you do it by faith. You do it to please me. Do it now. This is what pleases me. And you draw closer now. That's when the rapture comes. When the, when the trumpet sounds, there won't be another chance at the rapture. It's 
It already happened. Either you go up or you stay behind. I don't know how I want to go up. So I said, draw an eye. Move closer and closer to God. And he will come even closer to you. And then ask yourself a question deep in your heart. Do you want to draw closer to God? And do you want God to draw closer to you? Because yeah. he said he would. But he said, now you take the first steps. You make the step. You come closer. If you'll come, I'll meet you. And it gets better. The presence of God gets better and better and better. We haven't seen anything compared to what's about to happen in the glory. Falls. I've been in it. I've been in the glory. I understand a little bit about it. It's not, it's not just words, empty words to me. I mean, I have been in it. I've lost it. I, I don't know, I, I, I must have, when I did, I, I went into heaven, I believe. Yeah. It's real. I'm telling you, it is real, it is real, it is real. Not a figment of my imagination. Yeah. What, I ha what happened to me was real. Mm -hmm. And heaven is real. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is coming soon. Amen. In verse 10 it says, humble yourself. In the sight of God. Be willing to be made low before the Lord. Humble yourself. How, how do you humble yourself? Say, God, I, 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 I need you. I need more of you. I, 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 I don't have enough of you. You see, there, there, you could be listening to people watching by the live stream. You say, I'm just not, to be honest with you, I'm not really ready. I'm just not ready. Now that you bring, you, you, you paint this picture, I'm not, I don't think I'm really ready. If he was to, the, the trumpet was to sound, I don't know. Well, why don't you get ready? The Bible says, be ye ready. Be ready. You see, how do I get ready? It's a heart decision. It's done in your heart. It's done in your heart. Brother Tommy, you want to come up here and tell everybody how to get ready for the Lord to come? He's coming. He's coming. They need to be ready. Hallelujah. I can't tell you what to say. Hi, church. Hey. Where the word of God says, Matthew 6, 33. Anybody know what it says? Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything, everything, everything. Do you know how much everything means? Everything. everything. <laughs> Amen. Everything means everything. Seek first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added. Uh, as the pastors preached this morning, it was just a, a word that kept going through my mind. It's what profit of men? Yeah. And he gains the whole world, mm. but he loses his own soul. Yes, Amen? Yes. How many here know that you're born again? Put up your hand. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody knows you're born again. Amen? And how do you know? You just yes. don't, don't you, hey? Yeah. Right? No. Yes. So is it the coming of Jesus Christ. We just know that he's coming. And you know what? Heaven is going to be great. It is. Well, I'm, I'm so looking forward to heaven. Amen? Amen. I don't care what my wife says. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> You're the author, you're the completer. You're the alpha, you're the mega. 
God, we come to you today, Lord God, with open hearts and open, Lord God, with our hearts before you to give you praise, to give you worthy, to give you glory, to give you honor. We pray that you keep us in remembrance all day long today, Lord God. Lord God, it's all about you. It's all about you. That the world cannot, has nothing to offer us, Lord God, that you, could, that you have already given to us. So, Father, we give you all the praise today. We give you all the glory for all you're about to do. We thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Service tonight at 6.30. What time is service tonight? 6.30. Yes. I'm glad you saw it. So. <laughs> See you tonight. Thank you.